Thank you all for tuning in to another episode of the Barrel Chat Podcast. We are a podcast that provides an unfiltered look into the craft beer industry from the untrained palates of two dumbass outsiders. I am Matthew Muncie, and as always, I'm joined by Mr. Dustin Wood. How are you doing, Dustin? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I'm looking to get lucky with this beer. Um, I feel like maybe well, we can hold, get... Well, hold on, hold on, <laughs> hold on, hold on. We got to... We got to back that up because you can't say that while you're in a room with me and I'm just, not the beer, just the beer. what lucky means because that's I was getting go, there. Man, you're going to, that, that's how rumors start. <laughs> I was getting there. I was going to say maybe we pull the handle rumor. and we get four strawberries or whatnot. I don't, three strawberries. This is, this is going south real fast, which makes sense. Because it's a Philly sour. So we are talking today about a Hoosier Brewing Company spin to win payout beer. This is a Philly sour. And if you're saying, what the fuck is a Philly sour? Don't worry, because we did did too when we asked what kind of beer this was. Um, This is just labeled as a sour ale with strawberry, mango, and pineapple on untapped. Uh, So we reached out because our good buddy Greg happens to work at Hoosier Brewing. And we said, hey, Greg. What WTF, kind of sour man. beer is this? <laughs> and he said Philly sour. And my first thought is, you just made that shit up to fuck with us. Don't lie to me. <laughs> Don't lie to me, Greg. But then a quick Google search told me that, no, it, there is indeed something called a Philly sour. So this beer, again, is called Spin to Win Payout. So as you can imagine. That's how you get lucky. That's how you get lucky. Not any other way. It has a 5.5% ABV, a 4.45 on untapped. That's uh, pretty high, Greg. Do you have that pulled up? Okay. So pulling this up on untapped, they actually have quite a few of these. They have Spin to Win Quad Berry, Spin to Win Passion Fruit Orange Guava, Spin to Win Strawberry Banana Coconut. That sounds delicious. Uh, spin to win pit boss, a blueberry pomegranate, black currant, spin to win jackpot, but Jesus Christ, <laughs> spin, spin to win, spin pit to boss. win guacamole, avocado, Ew. lime, and cilantro. Hard pass. I don't know about all that. Well, you would taste like soap to you, right? Yeah, I, I actually that would be interesting <laughs> since, uh, yes, to me, cilantro, I have that uh, gene, that allergy where cilantro tastes like dish soap. So that would actually be interesting to know what that tastes like. Uh, I don't like this beer. It tastes like dish soap. (laughs) So spin to win. That 4.45, that's out of 115 ratings. It seems low. Yeah, but I mean, they also like release 85 beers every Thursday. (laughs) That's true. So, I mean, at a certain point, you're you're not maybe selling that much. And as we bring it back to a lot of times, how many people are still using untapped on a regular basis um so a lot which which is fine but i guess you know those stats later (laughs) as you say i mean like this one has six is averaging like six a month i think it's to be fair i don't i doubt they made a ton of it i also yeah i also think potentially they go and get shipped places a lot because it's sort of got that 450 feel where people buy them, maybe drink one of them and then trade them with people because it's, it's got, I mean, it's got trade value. Hoosier's got trade value now, um, which is crazy that we have two fucking breweries in once in Indiana that have trade value that aren't three Floyds. <laughs> that is true. Or Sun King or some of the bigger name breweries in state. So this one, so a Philly Sour. From what I have found, a Philly Sour is a lactic acid producing yeast. It does both tasks typically associated with creating a sour beer. It both sours and ferments on its own with no need for a second souring process or introducing any bacteria. Huh, so like a clean sour yeast. That's yeah. interesting. So apparently this was created by the University of Sciences in Philadelphia. Discovered, isolated, and cultivated this unique yeast strain. Huh. Crazy. So that explains why it's called a Philly. And then the sour is just because it sours your beer. But that is kind of cool. Like, I didn't know that existed. 
20, oh, 2020. So it's fairly new too. Fairly new process. That makes sense. Um, huh. I've never, never heard of a Philly sour. I've never had anybody mention that they are brewing a Philly sour, oh. but I am interested to find out how many other beers that are this type of beer, this like fruited sour are made this way because it feels like it's a clean way to make this beer instead of having to introduce uh, bacteria. I, yeah, this one would be fun to to n- know a little bit more about the brewing process and what makes it what makes it different. What makes it does it does it give any kind of different taste to it than what you would get in a normal souring process? Damn. That kind of stuff. Um, just because there's not really much info here on like what you're supposed to really taste, which for a lot of these, this one included, uh, there's not going to be much beer flavor to it because it's a heavily fruited beer. Yeah, heavily fruited beer. So before we jump into the beer style guideline, we are going to talk can design. And Dustin is our resident design expert. So we'll give you first crack at, uh, at this can. This can is a lot. <laughs> There's a lot. It's big, bold, kind of hectic. It has a slot machine on the front of it. It says spin to win. It's got the three fruits that are on it. So apparently you can't put more than three because you only got three slots. So they've got the strawberry, the mango, and the pineapple in there. Got a little handle. That's kind of cool. I like the concept of it, how it's laid out. And I really appreciate that the light on the top of the spin, uh, the slot machine has the H from the Hoosier logo in it. That's just extra creativity from the designer. I uh, highly despise despise the font that says fruited sour ale it's that is it papyrus it's hobo sands oh. <laughs> <laughs> how uh, do you despise something called hobo sand i just i don't know the the word fruited it just it's i don't know not my thing i want to make a brewery just called papyrus and then everything <laughs> everything's is just in, in papyrus. papyrus font um you could also go wingdings and just everything's in wingdings <laughs> I feel like there's a lot going on on the can. It's kind of busy. It's got money signs that are really, they look like uh, brush strokes, sort of. And then something else that might be a jewel, like a diamond and a crown. I'm not entirely sure. But it's a sticker on a bright can. So it's a 16 ounce bright that is all silver. Um, Roll me gently, young tiny beer drinker. Um, is what it should say on the side, <laughs> but it says, roll me gently and keep me cold. Drink soon. It's got the independence logo on it. So it's brewed independently. That's, I like when breweries put that on there. Taxman did that in the last one too. I don't know. It's not my favorite design in the world. It would not jump out to me. It's also got the, uh, bubbling problem that Matt was mentioning with Taxman, but I don't know. It's, I bought it. So it was interesting enough to me that I looked at it. Just, a, so, just busy. It it is busy. There is a weird contrast because the slot machine is like perfect artwork. Mm-hmm. And then the rest of it looks like a five-year-old drew it. And then they use that. So there's a bit of a contrast there that, I don't know, just seems odd. Like from a design choice. And now it's again, the, the, it's a little pixelated on the yellows and stuff like not terribly, but yeah, there's just, there's something that it just doesn't flow together. Like it, it looks like they took a background and then just took really nice clip art and put it on there. And that, you know, from a design perspective, I'm not a designer. I didn't go to design school, but something about it just doesn't sit right with me. Is it going to pop on a shelf? I would say yes. People would see this and at least go look at it. I think one problem is it doesn't really tell you what to expect. It says a fruited sour ale and then tells you what's in here, but like not kind of what fruited sour, like, is this a Berliner? Is it a Lambic? Is it a Philly sour? Like turns out it's a Philly. Yeah. Like what am I drinking here? And the, you know, it's on the side of the can. And so like you have to pick it up and turn it around to even see 
oh, it's a fruited sour. Like you don't see that on the front. So if you're if you're looking for something, you have to physically work to. And I, I think that's kind of a weird choice. Uh, contains sulfites. I don't know what the hell a sulfite is. But if you have to put it in big, bold letters, I don't know if that's great. Probably unhealthy. <laughs> There's just something about it that is. It fits Hoosier. I give them that. And, and that's not, <laughs> I'm not saying that in a negative way as it, as it probably seems like, but it, it's almost like this punk rock. Like we're not like other breweries kind of mentality is what this feels like. A sulfite is a preservative used in some drinks, foods, and medications. Low levels of sulfites are found in many foods. They release sulfur dioxide gases which is the active component component that helps preserve drinks, foods, and medications. All right. So it's a preservation agent. I guess so that, that makes sense when you have a bunch of fruits. Fruit, so it doesn't explode on the fucking Literally shelf. Literally floating in your beer. Um, you want that. Yeah, that probably does help with not making it explode. <laughs> as a Hashtag. Hashtag, <laughs> if you know, you know. Hoosier Brewing, they are out of Greenwood, Indiana. That is where they are headquartered now. I feel like they've moved around quite a bit. Uh, they had, at one time, a tap room down in Franklin, I think, that moved multiple times. And uh, But it seems like the, the brewery itself is doing well. They have the axe throwing as part of it, Yep, which is kind of interesting. They also sell, like, pizza and stuff there. Um, the thing that can interests me the most about Hoosier is they are on like that uh, beer drop or the Tavor and stuff like that. So you can oh, get I didn't know that. shipped that way. Uh, they're also, I believe, on Osner, but uh, another like beer purchasing I product. I was going to say, I have absolutely no idea what that is. All right, so let's hop into the BJCP beer style guidelines. So this beer was interesting because it is a special kind of beer style amongst the guidelines. Since Philly Sour is not a classic style uh, as like a Berliner or a Lambic or, you know, another kind of sour... This technically falls under what's called an American wild ale. Mm -hmm. And so this one is intended for beers fermented with uh, Saccharomyces and lacto with or without oak aging produced using any technique, traditional co-fermentation, quick kettle souring, yada, yada, yada. Um, I don't know what kind of, strain philly sour is technically i i didn't see that in the write-up got me this is the first time i've ever heard of a philly sour so yeah that's partially why um but it's interesting as far as that's concerned and it seems like it fits in there right yep but this is what i found i looked it up and i said you know i typed in philly sour bjcp and there were some uh, like Reddit posts and stuff like that of people saying like, hey, what category would this be included in? And everyone pointed towards that. And then I did a little bit more reading and that's where this lines up. And the big thing is it's not a classic beer style. Like that seems to be, uh, it's fruited for one. So it automatically dumps it into these, it's like categories 28 through 34 or something like that of the guidelines. But then if it's not a classic, it's considered a wild. It gets a little weird. It's a little hazy. So I assume that uh, this is not really going to meet any of this. And actually, as I'm reading this, like this is what's kind of stupid is it doesn't really meet any of this criteria either. Because this is talking about something being pale. That's not what's going to happen. We'll we'll just use this fruited beer one um, instead because I think it's going to be closer to this in in actuality. So this is more a uh, pleasant integration of fruit with beer, but still recognizable as beer. It's going to miss that mark wildly. 
The fruit character should be evident but in balance with the beers, not so forward as to suggest an artificial product. So I think what we're saying is this beer does not it doesn't fit it doesn't BJCP. fit BJCP at all because it's not just a plain sour and while it's fruited the fruited beer BJCP expects it to be a normal beer with fruit not pressed juice with alcohol and so I, this one's going to be a little a little wild yeah so honestly we could just fucking wing it and describe shit like, well i let's let's try and run through this and just see what happens so for this uh appearance wise varies by base style and special ingredients lighter color beer should show distinctive ingredient colors including in the head the color of fruit and beer is often lighter than the flesh of the fruit itself and may take on slightly different shades variable clarity although haze is generally understandable some ingredients may impact head retention okay i'm gonna just zero head retention yeah there was no head in this beer at all yeah no head um it's quite orange which probably stems back to mango and pineapple but my first thought about this is it looks like uh, the amoxicillin they give to kids. It has that kind of pinkish hue to it. Sort of. Uh, on my, yeah, I mean, it's not perfect, but it's like, if someone was like, explain it to me, that's what I would say. It's like, that's what it looks like with a bunch of fruit floaties in it. And then that's a pretty good description. Like somebody could be like, oh, okay. There are a lot of fruit floaties. Oh, there is a lot of floaties in this beer. It's sort of hazy. Is this haze? I mean, I feel this is... It's sort of fruity. Listen, you're probably going to hear me shit a lot on this beer style. And I know that everybody and their fucking brother loves this shit. This and 450. And yes, it, you know, spoiler alert, it does taste good. But this, this just isn't, this just isn't fucking beer, man. Like, and that's not to shit on anybody because everyone's got what they love and stuff. But, like, come on. Like, this looks literally like someone pressed juice. No, it looks like we're drinking a, like... What's those, like, healthy... They make, like, tomato juice, vitamin... Fuck, what's it called? Are you talking about, like, uh... It's V8? It's V8. <laughs> that's V8 what fusions? this reminds me of. Is like it looks a like a V8 fusion. Yeah. Which is their fruit version. Yep. Like, that's kind of what this makes me think of, is, like, I'm drinking something like that. You're saying like this that. is healthy. Uh, <laughs> sure. There's fruit in it. There's probably more fruit than alcohol. <laughs> so, appearance-wise, I mean... I, I think it's ugly, to be yeah. honest. Like, if you put this in front of me, in, a, like, a blind a taste test, it doesn't make me want to drink it. Like, if this was just in a clear glass no name set next to everything else like this is probably not the first one you may pick it up to smell it first because you're kind of like what the fuck is that but you're probably not trying it first is that beer yeah exactly it's like are you fucking did you put v8 in front of me what is this like a palate cleanser is this so i don't get drunk today yeah so i don't know that it matches the appearance much nope probably not Aroma wise, uh, the fruit character should be noticeable in the aroma. However, some fruit have stronger aromas and are more distinctive than others. Allow for a range of fruit character in intensities from subtle to aggressive. Hop aroma may be lower than in the base style to better show the fruit character. The fruit should add an extra complexity, but not be so prominent as to unbalance the resulting presentation. Okay, it's only fruit? <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't, there's nothing really s sour smelling. There's no hop. It smells like a starburst. It smells yeah. like a pink starburst is what it smells like. It's a little uh, tart. Yeah. On the nose, too. Like, I get a little bit of the, like, tartness from what I assume is the mango and pineapple. Mango, pineapple, papaya. It's like it smells very fruity. It smells delicious. It does. It it smells good. It makes you it does make you want to take a drink. It does not, you know, make you kind of 
be like, well, I don't, I don't know about it all does that. Not like, smell it's very, like beer. yeah, it's very sweet. It's very uh, fruity. There's, there's not much else to this. You, you don't smell any sort of beer. There's no malts no, whatsoever yeah. in it at all. Like this is just heavily fruited. And that's what it is. That's a fucking long description of flavor. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> yeah, it's two paragraphs, which is a lot for the BJCP. Uh, Flavor-wise, as with aroma, distinctive fruit flavors should be noticeable and may range in intensity from subtle to aggressive, but the fruit character should not be artificial or inappropriately overpowering as to suggest a fruit juice drink. Well, that's what it does. Bitterness, hop, and malt flavors. Yeah, so I mean... <sighs> Fruit generally adds flavor, not sweetness, since fruit sugar is usually fully ferment. So then where the hell does the sweetness come from? However, residual sweetness is not necessarily a negative characteristic. Some fruit made out may add sourness, bitterness, and tannins, which must be balanced in the resulting flavor profile. So, I mean, th this doesn't really match that at all because it, it is a fruit drink. That is exactly what it tastes like. That's what it smells like. Fresh, it pressed. Is Fruit juice. Just a fruit juice that's going to get you a little drunk. I will say it is insanely flavorful. It has, it's super like sweet on the finish, but I, there's like a tartness at the very beginning that I like. What's the other? So it's mango, pineapple, and is it papaya? Uh, strawberry, mango, strawberry. and pineapple. Strawberry. That's what it is. Okay. That makes sense. So, the strawberry, I feel like, is the very beginning flavor, and then the mango and pineapple take over on the back end. Yeah, it it tastes really good. There's You do get some of the sour. I do give it that. Like, you can taste the sour in there. It's not a, a pucker sour or anything. It's a very nice kind of subtle, like, fruity kind of sour that you would you would think you would get. I'm not really sure... Any, it's interesting because none of these are sour uh, fruits. Yeah. But it kind of gives off that kind of sour. It's probably like that. that lactic. Yeah. that That's the problem I have with these. It's like, it tastes good. I give it that. Like, you're not going to drink this and be like, well, that sucks. Like, this is the perfect kind of thing to give someone who hates beer. Yeah, put it in a glass and don't tell them it's beer, and they're going to think yeah. it's a fucking mixed drink. Or, you know, you, you, you take a wife or... Or a buddy who just does not like beer whatsoever. And then you're just like, well, just drink this. And it's like, it's fine. We're just like, put it in a V8 bottle. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's going to take you a while to get drunk. But it it's at least something to drink. I just, I have a hard time with these. They taste good. They're terrible looking. This one's definitely not pretty. And it, there's just no beer quality to this whatsoever. But I... <sighs> I also understand why people like them. I do not understand why it is a craze within this state. And yeah. I know it's basically just two breweries duking it out right now for top of the food chain in that area. But it is just weird. Like, why did this become so popular? Because it's a fucking bridge. It's what gets people in the door. It's what they make money with. Because I know, but I mean, like, yeah, why are people but trading why for do it? people yeah. love it so much? Why why were people standing for camping out for fucking 450 North slushies that ultimately they were being lied to on? You know, <laughs> that eight percent beer was only three percent. Okay, you you camped to buy that. Like, you know, we've shit on these beers plenty of times. We're always down to try them, see if things change, see if our palates change? Do our minds change? My mind has not changed. I still like, don't think it's beer. Like, I would not buy this. And I mean, again, that's not I'm, not... I'm not shitting on the brewery or anything or anybody who wants to buy these because clearly there is a, a consumer base out there who enjoys this or at least enjoys selling it to other people to make money off of it. <laughs> but, like, this is not a beer I would buy. And I don't... The, they're, 450 is not... A company I would buy them from, I would not buy any of these. Like going to a store or something, I would not actively buy these. You know, we went down to Hoosier Brewing one day and we had, you know, as we typically do, we just basically get flights of the entire uh, beer list 
And so we had all theirs. And I do remember that day being down there and like, I think three of them were good and the rest of them were pretty meh. And I think a lot of that comes down to when you're, they do put out like five or six new beers almost every Thursday. And at a certain point, you cannot hit top quality with that kind of quantity. It's just not possible. Yeah. So this one's interesting because I don't think it's probably the same base beer as all the other Berliners, but those heavier one, the other Berliners, they brew most breweries. They brew a huge fucking batch of insanely bad flavored base beer, but it's like 10 or 12 or 14% Berliner. That's just tart and sour as all get out. That's why you never find the base beer on the market because it's not good. (laughs) But then they fruit the shit out of it, and they then they break the batches apart. So that's the most of cost-effective way to do these. Uh, last thing here is the mouthfeel. Fruit often decreases body and makes the beer seem lighter on the palate. Some smaller and darker fruits may add a tannic depth, but this astringency should not overwhelm the base beer. There is no base beer here. Uh, this definitely did not decrease the body. This made it heavier. Uh, with way more adjuncts and floaties and everything else. It's still pretty thin though. Yeah. It, it's a thin beer, but it's, it's, it's one that's going to sit on the stomach. You know, I'm not like, I'm not mad at the beer or the, the drink. I am mad that this is like a huge popular thing. Yeah. Because I think this is, God, I, I hate talking like this sometimes because I, I don't want to piss anybody off and I don't want to be overly harsh, but I just think this is a fucking joke to the beer industry. And I mean, to each their own, but like, I just do not understand what this does for people, what this does for people brewing it. How is this a fun beer? You get into brewing to brew beer. This is not what you said. You know what? I'm going to go be a brewer to brew this. No, I think it's so what they make money with. And I think yeah. that it's hard to turn away, especially once you sort of, Say you you make two sets where you sell the shit out of them and people are paying you thirty dollars a four pack, then it's hard to go back, right? It is, but it's just like, is this really what you want to do? Because like, how do you move on from this? You go, I mean, yeah. What happens I when assume, the fad dies? Yeah, exactly. And you're not brewing anything else. Like when this fad finally kills itself, what the hell is four fifty going to do? Because every other time I've had their beer, it's not been very good. And this is all that anybody seems to care about is is their slushy series and everything else. So when that eventually dies, or maybe that's just who they are for the rest of their lives, and but well, eventually back, it's going to die. They go back to making wine. <laughs> that is true. 450 at least. Now, Hoosier, however, has good stouts, and they have yes. good porters, and they have, I mean, I've had good like Pilsners and shit like that from them, so... I don't think that they're going to have that struggle because they do brew good beer outside of this. I think they jumped on and went, let's make a lot of fucking money. I mean, yeah. And that's where, I mean, I have a hard time telling them like that's a bad idea because it's really only two people doing it, but it almost just seems like a pissing contest at this point of like, well, who, which of these two can do it? I mean, it is a masculine driven world out there so might as well be a missing contest (laughs) right i I just it's hard for me to have a lot of joy drinking looking at even thinking about people just sitting around brewing this like yeah man people bitched about the hazy game when it first came out because it was an ugly beer but i'm gonna tell you what it's not by any means Ugly like some of these. Listen, you can have an ugly beer if it tastes great. And I think that's what a lot of the hazies did was they they tasted great. This tastes great. It just doesn't taste like beer, you know? And we run into that, too, with with other fruited beers or adjunct beers of where you're just like, well, you just put way too much shit in this. Yeah, this just tastes like caramel, and it's not a beer. Yeah, it's like, oh, here's a German cake beer. Okay, well, I taste German cake, but I taste absolutely no beer in this. What are we doing here? Like, you do run into that from time to time, and and it sucks. I think that's one of the worst things about the beer industry itself, 
and that's just a very personal opinion. But if you're going to tell me that there's a base beer there, I want to fucking taste that base beer. Because otherwise, why am I? Because you know this shit's not cheap either. I bet this stuff is 20 bucks. I have no idea. But if I had took a wild guess, I'd bet near 20 bucks for a four pack. If not more. Yeah. And like, that's probably a lot 20, of money to probably spend 22, on. Uh, not I guess. beer. People are going to pay it. And. I see it sticking around for a while, but I also see it dying. I don't think it's going to stay permanently. I think we're going to get back into the Berliner, Berliner Weiss fad, but I think it's going to be how a Berliner was, where you get it and then you have the flavorings that you can put in it. I think that'll be interesting if that comes back, like how Abby was doing it. Yeah. If we go tier-wise, this is going to be a weird tier beer. This is going to be... A weird tier beer. So let's because uh, nothing nothing about it is <laughs> wrong. <laughs> like it I don't know how I can judge it on like BJCP. You can't really judge it on BJCP. Again, there you're right. I mean technically, as far as we are aware, there is nothing wrong with this yeah. beer. I mean it fits it, what the Philly says it should be. It's tasty. There's supposedly beer in this, or at least alcohol <laughs> is in this. There was, there might be alcohol in it. I think, you know, that's the hard part I have is like, I have no idea. Are we being lied to? I don't think we are because of how much shit 450 North took for that. So why would another place open themselves up to that? But it is just kind of rough to think. I mean, I'm just going to say it. I'd put it because. Like you said, there's there's nothing technically wrong with it. I'd put it fifty. D tier, very end. Like art like this drinking this and seeing that Ardent is in the D tier is kinda like, oh boy. <laughs> Either this is too high or Ardent is too low. But Ardent had problems. See, and that's the problem too, is Ardent had problems, but I'd still drink that over this. So I think what what in what needs to happen with this and almost, do we just say no no beer tier we yeah. just leave it off because it's so well it doesn't fit the the style it just guys doesn't I mean it just doesn't fit anything and I think that's fair is that it's just a I think it's I mean if if I was to put it on a number it would be higher than fifty but the problem that I run into is where does it go and why I can't explain where it should go i can't explain why it should go there would i put vodka in this and drink it yeah fuck yeah pour some vodka in that and just make it a mixed drink all day it's not a beer so i can't put it on my beer guide can't put it on the beer styles i think that's fair i think we just make like a a notable or just a or we make a we make a tier that just says 450 slash hoosier sours (laughs) And we just put it in there. Because look, it's good. It's got awesome flavors. The fruits are what they say they are. But I just, I don't know how to rate it. No. Because I just don't think it's... Because I do think Ardent is where it needs to be. But it's hard to say that Ardent is only like five beers higher than this beer. Because while Ardent had a lot of problems with it, based on what it's supposed to taste like. It was a beer. It was a beer. And (laughs) to me, this just isn't a beer. Which it's all gone now, so technically it's not a beer anymore. But it's not all gone. That shit's still in the glass. (laughs) What was in this glass, uh, I just just don't... It just doesn't register as beer to me. So, sorry, Greg. Sorry, Hoosier. Sorry, everyone who loves these beer styles. This was just not your week i would drink it and i enjoyed it but it's not what i would like call a beer no uh so you can follow us on instagram we are at barrel chat get on there yell at us uh tell Tell us us that we were wrong tell us yeah tell us how i mean hey man if somebody can explain to us why we're wrong please do uh you know we don't sit here and act like we're brewer experts because we don't brew beer uh we are just uh two guys who like to drink beer and talk about it and 
as we've done that for a few years now, uh, and we've talked to brewers and stuff, you, you kind of pick up things along the way that don't make you an expert, but make you just a tad bit more knowledgeable than uh, the casual consumer. That is it. Uh, so you can follow us on there. Uh, we do a lot of stories um, instead of posts. We try and keep the posts to being about the episodes themselves and then the stories when we're out and about drinking or drinking at home, just kind of different stuff that we have. If you do enjoy our show, make sure you leave us a rating on whatever podcast app you use. Uh, five stars, obviously the best, and that does help us show up in any sort of algorithms that they have when it comes to, hey, maybe you should listen to this podcast because other people have, and it's all you know, beer podcast related, food related, stuff like that. Um, if you do have a specific beer that you would like us to review, you can drop us a DM on Instagram or email us barrelchatpodcast at gmail.com. Uh, all we ask is try to make it something that we can easily obtain. So uh, something that is either from Indiana, um, if it's an outside beer, something that you know we could go to Total Wine or Meyer or something like that to pick up uh, really helps. If it is a beer that you have that you would like us to try, maybe it's a super rare beer or uh, just an extra beer that you have from vacation and you really like the brewery, we would be glad to try that, even pay you for it. Um, just, again, hit us up on Instagram or by email and let us know, and we can have those conversations. And for that, this is going to end our show. So we will see you all next week. Cheers. Cheers.